Marcus Ely here for Status Coup, and I'm here with Ruben De Silva. Um, you ran in, I can't remember which district it was. Congressional District 1. Uh, one, yes. CD1 in 2000? 2016 and in 18. I ran as an independent in 18 okay. as a progressive Democrat in 2000. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the field, uh, the presidential field coming up 2020, um, what you've seen from the debates thus far, and what you think? Uh, I'm... Uh, it, uh, there's, there's a lot going on. There's still a lot of candidates. It hasn't, it's, it's, it's starting to uh, winnow out a bit. But uh, again, I'm rooting for the progressive candidates. You know, folks like Bernie Sanders, people like Elizabeth Warren, folks who've embraced this uh, people over uh, power, people over the establishment uh, theme to their campaigns. And um, this, uh, this election, I'm actually looking at uh, uh, endorsing in the primary. So uh, I'm taking a look at folks like Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, uh, folks of that vein, who uh, in the end, I think, uh, should be the president of the United States. Um, what what is it about progressives? Of course, you ran as a progressive on that pro, uh, progressive platform, getting money out of politics, um, Medicare for all, all of that. So, can you talk a little bit about what um, what it means to be a progressive policy wise that you're looking for before they get your endorsement? Yeah. So, what it means, I think, this is again, progressivism is such a dynamic, such a complex, you know, term. But I think it boils down to a one sort of uh, ideal, and that is, uh, are you supporting people? Are you supporting the, the, the structures of power, the folks who are in power, billionaires, you know, elitists, uh, folks who are like party leaders, so on and so forth. And when it comes down to it, getting money out of politics, making sure that you're uh, running a grassroots fundraising based campaign, those things matter. Supporting uh, programs like Medicare for All uh, are, are, are tremendously important. We know that a majority of uh, the Democratic Party and the plurality, even of Republicans, support programs like Medicare for All. And it's still a wing of the Democratic Party that's pushing against it, saying that it's not a good idea, it's not something that the people want. These sort of things are important. And, uh, and candidates who are now uh, pushing themselves and aligning themselves on that vein of, of, of populism, of, of, of people power, are, I think, uh, really a part of this, uh, are, are the leaders of the progressive movement. And to me, I think it boils down to two folks, uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, it's a, a lot of people have pretty much called it a two-person race for them. Um, now, there, there seems to be the, uh, Biden and Buttigieg are who the establishment's pretty much going after. I tend to think it's Biden for the establishment because nobody else in the establishment's really consistently polled above 10 percent um, in the polls. So wh what do you think the establishment is going to try to do? to get Biden um, to make him a thing. Yeah, I think, you know, they, they have the actual ability right now, especially in a town like Vegas, where they can control the levers of machines. You know, you're, you're, you, uh, you have long-term relationships that you built up with uh, folks who can turn voters out, and your voters, not, and not the, uh, not the other person's votes. So, and we, and we've, we've seen this happen here in, in Las Vegas before. There's certain organizations uh, that are really in line and in, you know, with the establishment and are just waiting for their phone call to, to, to get into gear and to, and to turn their folks out. Regardless of what that organization's membership actually says, they go and do what they won't do. Yeah, it's very true. So the, the machines machines are still a part of the, uh, the democratic environment in many states, Nevada included. And that's one of the great, I think, advantages the establishment has over progressive candidates is the fact that they have the, uh, the actual controls over their lever. How do you push back and fight against it? you got to get regular people out to the polls, out to the caucus sites, and get them involved. If that takes place, then you'll see a, a progressive in the in the White House. Okay. Um, so when we're specifically talking about those kinds of things, um, the difference, the major difference for me between the Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren campaign, like the, there's a bunch of policy differences, but the major, major difference is Bernie Sanders has a movement behind him that was ready-made and from 2016. And, you, of course, it broke apart, went into the state hour revolution things, and then Voltron forced back together, <laughs> you know. So, like, a million volunteers on day one. And these folks are knocking doors like I've never seen before. And, like, there's not a ton of commercials. There's not a ton of social media push. It's just knock on doors, talk to people. So, um... So what do you think that that, the, 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 the use of the people power, um, how do you think that's going to make a difference? Is it something that only time will tell and we'll see when the primaries come? Or do you think that that's something measurable um, right now? I think it's for sure measurable right now. If you look at some of these numbers uh, and, and statistics that are, that are now being affiliated with, specifically Bernie Sanders, you know, having uh, the most individual contributions ever uh, given to a candidate in this time in, in a presidential race in the history of American elections, that's speaking volumes. The fact that he raised 
outraised everybody in the last uh, uh, FEC cycle. Twenty-five million dollars ahead of a uh, uh, Buttigieg and ahead of a uh, you know a former vice president, uh, you know Joe Biden. That matters. You look at something like AOC, who in the last uh, uh, again FEC cycle outraised Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff. You know speaks volumes. She's a freshman congresswoman doing this. And I think that that right there are visible and measurable examples now that uh, that we are that this is a movement that uh, that, that that people power is uh, even in some ways uh, denting and hopefully overtaking now uh, you know the, uh, the the elitist establishment. It's very true. Ruben De Silva, um, are you gonna run again? Do we know? Is there news yet? You don't know. We'll see, I'm, I'm just very happy right now being a teacher, getting people involved and engaged in the uh, electoral process. You know, uh, and I'm also here wearing my veterans gear to, to show folks and let folks know that you can be an Iraq War veteran, receive a Purple Heart, get shot in the war, and still be down for a person like Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren and be a real progressive. Progressivism is patriotism to me. And I'm hoping to see, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a somebody, one of, one of these candidates, uh, get that guy in the White House out of there. We need, we need some change in this country. Appreciate you, right, Anytime, anytime. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statusquo.com/join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.